So let's get started here. Um, so um, again, Melissa Skibinski here with the Skibinski Strength and Conditioning and have the opportunity today to have Doug Bodger joining us um, on a, a podcast. And uh, I really haven't prepared him very well for this. I really haven't given him any idea of what we're going to talk about. But um, I guess, uh, Doug, maybe if you could start by introducing yourself, just, you know, who you are and, you know, what, what your career was. Um, and, uh, you know, you'll do a better job doing that than I will. So <laughs> sure, um, sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm Doug Bodger. Um, I grew up here on Vancouver Island and started playing hockey at a young age. My older brothers played, so I kind of followed them around and uh, uh, always loved playing a game, loved playing all sports, really. I think I played everything from basketball, soccer to everything, volleyball. So I just love being doing sports stuff and baseball and, and um, you know, got to be pretty good at hockey and I uh, got a chance to uh, uh, get looked at a few camps. So I went to a junior camp in Kamloops and, uh, back then there was no draft. So they just put you on a protected list. And yeah. I was originally protected by the newest Mr. Bruins, which uh, were in Vancouver and they folded and Kamloops or Edmonton Oilers bought the team and moved them to Kamloops. So they were Kamloops junior Oilers. Okay. And, uh, I was there at 15, uh, came back here for a year. At 16, I made the team in the Western Hockey League and uh, had a pretty good rookie season. Uh, surprised myself a little bit and uh, was pretty confident in when I could play. But then uh, I, I had a really good season. And then you get all of a sudden in NHL scouts start looking at you and talking about you. And I came back the next season and had another great season and uh, was selected in the first round of the 1984 entry draft to the Pittsburgh Penguins. They had another guy that year, first overall, his name was Mario Lemieux. People might know him. Uh, they don't know me as much, but that's okay. <laughs> and, hey, hey, we do, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, that season, uh, was the team wasn't very good and uh, they were rebuilding. So at 18 years old, they told me I was on the team. So nice. um, got to be on the team at 18 and uh, started a career in the National Hockey League. And it lasted for 15 seasons and ended up retiring in 1999, playing for a bunch of different teams. It's not enough time to talk about them all. So probably so. So, uh, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much uh, where it's been. Yeah, and what's, I'm, I mean, you definitely go ahead. I mean, you can touch on which teams you played with. Feel free to. Um, yeah, I started in, in Pittsburgh for, I was there for four years. Yeah. I had committed to the Buffalo Sabres in 19, well, gee, I don't even remember the year now, 93, yeah. I think, and uh, played there for eight seasons. Uh, after that, I went to San Jose for two years uh new jersey for about six months over to la for a year and then finished in vancouver for a few months well it must have been nice to finish in vancouver close to home so um yeah, yeah it was, it was. and now you're living on the island and um so i'll i'll quickly touch on how i how i got to know you and that was through uh i had a job opportunity to work in the bchl um pretty much when i was in my early 20s and um and I'm only in my mid twenties now, so I don't know how that happened. But <laughs> that didn't seem like long ago. <laughs> just kidding, yeah. So no, uh, and so I was the the trainer, I guess, with the team there, and you were the assistant coach at the time. So, um, you know, that's how I originally met you, and have a lot of great memories listening to you talk because you have <laughs> a, a really a really interesting career, and I feel like the time you played in the NHL was also a very interesting time in the league. Um, and I'm not just saying that it's not interesting now, but I feel like there was a lot of shifts in the league just in terms of um, taking off season training more seriously. So I still remember you telling me stories of the guys drinking in between periods or smoking in between periods or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah my, my first season in the league, uh, uh, um, I think we were one of the first teams to have a strength coach. Okay, and there you go. And everybody went, no, come on. <laughs> we have to stretch. We don't stretch. And they wanted the guys to go in the weight room. And the guys, we don't go in the weight room at all. That's for the injured guys. Yeah. And yeah, they were drinking Coca-Cola in between periods. And <laughs> I go back, I go into the washroom and I smell smoke. And I go, what's going on? Somebody's smoking. There's two of the older guys sitting on there having a, having a smoke. On the toilet. 
<laughs> yeah, so that was, uh, it was a big change and it really wasn't, you know, it, it went, it just fluctuated so much to eat steak before the game. And then all of a sudden, no, don't do that. Eat pasta <laughs> and yeah. eat bread, eat a lot of bread. And, and then you retire and you don't know what to eat. So I didn't eat, eat weight. So it was kind of weird, but it definitely was a start of it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so uh, we were the, one of the first guys to have one, I think. And then everybody has one now, of course. But uh, oh, yeah, and now oh. they have like assistant strength coaches and head strength. So yes, um, at, at every level, I feel like it's it's there. So yeah, the summer was for resting. <laughs> Nobody trained in the summer. These guys train all year round now. So yeah, it's yeah. totally different. Yeah, totally different. Well, and I remember you saying something about training camp being when you kind of got in shape, right? Like was training exactly. camp, whereas now guys are ready to go in training camp like they're yeah. they're training in the off season to be ready to to show off their skills because you know they're yeah that's the, the first way. the first day i always remember the first day it was no pucks down and back down and back we got to get in shape yeah. so that that was what training camp was for training yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the word it's the word yeah. it's, uh, and, and 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 even the coaches like i mean it, you know feel free to you can pick the stories because, uh, you know, again, I've, I've heard a few, a few of them. Again, not, I know not all of them, but a few of them. But um, I, I feel like also during that time, you came across some interesting coaches and it doesn't necessarily have to be a strength coach, but, you know, any of your head assistant coaches or, um, you know, people you came across that impacted your career and kind of helped you, you know, keep on pushing for those 15 years. Um, any stories that come to mind of coaches that made an impact or? Well, yeah, for sure. There's been, there's a lot of them actually in Pittsburgh. Yeah. We, we, we struggled. Bob Berry was the first guy I had and uh, he was an old school player in the seventies. So, yeah. Uh, and then it just starts changing a bit. And uh, I ended up in Buffalo with John Muckler who uh, just recently passed away. And he's one of the, um, you know, the head guys of the Edmonton Oilers of the dynasty they had in the, in the eighties and uh, was really uh, an honor to play for him. Uh, he, uh, he, he he wanted just to keep the puck. Uh, his mentality: don't give it to the other team. Let's just keep it, and let's just go for it. Offense, go go go! And it was it was it was really good to have him there. And uh, and John Tortorella was our assistant coach, and he's still in the league. So yeah. uh, he brought him along there too. And Torts was a funny guy, and uh, he was very intense. <laughs> but <laughs> everybody doesn't like him, but he's an honest guy. He, you don't work or you don't do the job, he's gonna tell you. And that's the way he it is. He's not, yeah. yeah, that's what it is. So yeah. yeah, and it's and it's definitely now I got back into coaching and and it's so much computer work and video. It's crazy. It's like being in school. <laughs> so, so it really changed. Where are you coaching right now? I was in Victoria the last uh, four years. Okay. Uh, okay. With Victoria Rose in the Western League. So I've been yeah. there and Dan Price and. Jeff Best are the coaches there and they were very into their video stuff. And okay. It is a long, a long day for those kids to watch a lot of video and they watch a lot of video. It drives me crazy. I go bonkers, but um, it, it's very helpful, obviously in ways, but it can be too much at times. And, and uh, they almost try to think for the kids a lot and they have yeah. to think for themselves at times. So I find that um, uh, very different now when I got back into it four years ago. I went, wow, this is un unreal. I, we never had this. Yeah, they're it kind of, I, I'm, ass I'm assuming you were always a student of the game or you, maybe is it your feel for the game and understanding of the game? Is, do you think that's different for the kids? Like they're, or, or just it's being handed to them? Like it's being. I, I think it's being handed to them. I, I think we had to figure it out. Yeah. Um, you had to watch from the bench and see what was going on and oh, oh hey, that guy's pretty good but watch out for him you know now they have big video showing players but uh um we really had to figure it out for ourselves and uh yeah. there was not really too much pre-scouting on the other team it was just okay who are we playing oh these guys are good let's go yeah and it was more about us doing what we wanted to do offensively and try to win the game instead of trying to say wow watch out for these guys and I think that confidence level was just let's go let's go beat them and obviously it didn't work all the time but uh yeah. you recover and go back and do it again yeah yeah that's true that's true um 
and then other other coaches or stories from coaches that you can think of or i, I mean sorry to put um, you on the spot like that no but. no it's okay i was trying to think go back all the coaches been a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if that's good <laughs> uh they say uh, john muckler was one of my favorites larry robinson who i had in la was uh one of the guys I idled when I grew up and he played for Montreal in the, in the seventies was a fantastic player, big guy, could skate, could, could uh, play offense, could play defense. And it was really an honor to, to, to play for him too. So um, those are the two guys and you know, that really uh, um, stand out in my career. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, and then uh, I, again, I, I'm, I'm good with the general questions here, but uh some highlight memories, I guess, you know, of, of your career and, and your ongoing career. So now you're, you've got a career as a coach and you had a career as a player. Um, some memories maybe that stand out and they don't necessarily have to be related to coaches, but uh, maybe some, yeah, whatever stands out. Again, that's a, a very general question, but. Yeah, yeah, no, um, obviously, um, you know, just getting into the league, first game was very memorable, you know, and, um, uh, just getting there it was it kind of happened so fast that I went from the draft to graduating from high school went to the draft uh summertime and uh I was on the team so it went just went by pretty quick one one year you're playing junior hockey and then the next year you're playing pro hockey so it's it's it was so yeah. fast and such an adjustment yeah. um um you know the guys that I met are probably the biggest memory that I have some of the players I played with some of the hall of fame players uh, gee, list goes on. Mario Lemieux, uh, Pat Lafontaine, Phil Housley, Dale Harchuk, Dominic Hasek, Grant Fuhr. Uh, wow, keep going. Uh, I played in, in, in New Jersey with Scott Stevens and Scott Niedemeyer and Dave wow. Anderchuk and Dougie Gilmore and just so many guys. And they were all such great guys. And uh, that's every you can ask any player what they miss most about not playing anymore is just the guys it was just yeah. fun being a team and fun meeting all these guys from all over the world and uh and uh you know uh playing with them and uh it's a pretty good players i look back now and wow i played with some pretty good players and alexander mogilny another guy i forgot but um yeah it was it was it was a lot of fun um and uh it, it was it seemed like a long time in your life, but it was a short time in your life. But yeah, uh, when you say, yeah, yeah, it seemed to be, uh, it seemed to be long. Like that was never going to end, and then all of a sudden, it, it's it's really not a long time in your life. So, and then you get into coaching, and it's a totally different game. You, you you're still a player in your mind, but you got to do the coaching side. And and uh, I, I'm very uh, uh, um, very quiet on the bench, and I try to try to stay focused and encourage. I was always the guy that was always wanted to be encouraged. And uh, when I made a mistake, I knew it. I didn't really need to hear it from the guy behind me. So yeah, exactly. I really try to save that till the next day. And, and I, I get guys coming off with their heads down and, and coming to the bench after we got scored on, I go, where are you going? Get back out there. It's, it's only yeah. one, nothing. You've got lots yeah. of game to go. Yeah. So I think I'm more of a mental mental coach more than anything. And I think that's a lot of what these kids need is, is, um, you know, uh, is you play hard, you make mistakes, but you got to play through it and you got to, you just got to try your, your best every time. And, uh, a lot of things can bounce around in your head and you, you have to clear those. And I think I remember, I call it the emotional roller coaster ride where you win games and you lose games and you win games and you're up and down and you're happy, you're sad. And um, it's very tough emotionally. And I think that's a, a huge part of, uh, of having a long career. Yeah. And I mean, I, I use a similar analogy for people with um, injuries. So, I mean, I, I, by trade, I'm a physio, but I've always been involved in the strength stuff. So, uh, use a staircase analogy so like you're you're working towards getting back to whatever your goal is and you could be climbing your staircase but sometimes this the one stair is long so maybe you're plateaued at that stair and then eventually you make an improvement and you're getting closer to where your end goal is but mm -hmm. you know kind of remind, reminded me of your roller coaster there and there's going to be these ups and downs and but you keep going you keep yeah. stay on that roller coaster you keep plugging away at those stairs because you know like you know in my opinion it's it's gonna be shitty sometimes it's gonna be great yeah. sometimes and it's gonna be boring <laughs> sometimes or you know but you just kind of keep going because 
there's a reason you signed up, right? Like you're right. obviously something you're interested in. So, um, and you're probably good at it if you're there. So um, you, think of, you think of the top of a roller coaster is really fun when you get there. And then when you go down, it's fun, but you get to the bottom, you go, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to get back up there again. <laughs> yeah, and then the anticipation builds again. Yeah. And like your staircase thing, I think you're you're going up, and that's a good landing. We call that, right? You're, in the, yeah. you're on the landing. Yeah. And you just, yeah. You want you got to get up to the top floor. <laughs> gotta keep going. Gotta, gotta keep, keep going. going. That's good. Yeah, but I, it's amazing though. I feel like the more the longer I work, um, how much I see the impact of the mind. Um, and and you used a, a term with me years ago that you said you got from a coach of yours that the game of hockey is eighty percent mental. The rest <laughs> is in your head. That's right. <laughs> and who told you that one? That was Larry Robinson. <laughs> okay. And I never forgot that because I was just like, holy crap, like this could apply for literally anything. You substitute the word hockey for curling for, you know, you name it, whatever sport or, yeah. or life in general. Right. And, and, um, you know, back to that mindset piece. So I, I I've used that a lot to uh, <laughs> borrow that term or that. Well, that's, that's great. Term. We can share it's it with everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I never forgot that one. So yeah, I never forgot that from Larry either. Yeah, ninety percent mental, the rest is in your head. I go, hmm. Wait, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Very good one. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at the athletes and and you know the mind, the the impact of the mind. And there was another thing you used to used to talk about too in the in the um, coach's office. There was about kind of what personalities embody a, a good player so those players mm -hmm. that stand out those ones that kind of are memorable you know why what is it because it's not just talent I mean a talent right. it's important right but yeah, yeah. you know um can you touch on those other pieces I know you talked about coachability and attitude but um is there other ones that I'm missing um I think we did a um I think we wrote that on the board one time of going who is a perfect player to be drafted and you have to have all four, I think it was five. You, yeah. If you have all five of these things, you, you got a chance. Uh, yeah, you got a chance. Yeah, you got a chance. Yeah. yeah. You have to have talent, obviously, one. You have to be coachable. You have to have a good attitude. You have yeah. to have a work ethic. Yes. And you have to be a good person. <laughs> There's five. And I think we went through our team, I think we got maybe one. <laughs> yeah. And he did get drafted. But he, oh, he didn't did make it. But there was a, our best player was one of those. He had, he had talent. <laughs> he had a bad attitude and yeah. he was not coachable and he was not a good, not a good kid. <laughs> right. And, and people see through that pretty quick uh, oh, yeah. because, it, you know, it affects the team and, and it also affects the individual's ability to, to be better, right. To be, yeah. to become even better than they are. So um, I mean, I had the opportunity to work with a two-time Olympic gold medalist in curling. So the last 12 years I've been away from the island. Um, again, I just kind of luck of the draw, started working with this athlete, and this is before she won her medal. And um, I'll put it to you this way. She's won two of these medals, and you'd never know it. Mm -hmm. You know, she's, yeah. she's emailing me about how do I get better? How do I right, improve? Yeah. What can I, what else can I do to get better? You know, and sometimes I have to remind myself, it's like, oh, like you, you did it. Like you got your ultimate right goal, but no, that's, that's not it. Like yeah. there's still this passion for the game, this hard work ethic and this coachability that that was always there. And that's part of why I feel like, you know, she's yeah. succeeded. So, um, that's great. that's great stuff. Yeah. And so then you did bring up some, uh, players you played with and again I have another another story I remember you, you saying uh, involving Dominic Kashuk so hopefully it's okay that we share this story oh, sure, yeah, um, yeah. It's with him with ice chips <laughs> yes 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 Don and goalies <laughs> are always different everybody knows that and, uh, <laughs> it was a play we were in practice with John Muckler and things weren't going right and he was mad at the team so he called us all in just to ream us out a little bit tell us to pick it up a little bit so Dom decides he puts his glove and his blocker on a net and he turns around and he's got his back to us and we don't know what he's doing there. So Mockler says, okay, let's get back to it. Let's start getting this practice going. And Dom's still in the crease. And I go over and I go, what are you doing? <laughs> he goes, are you ready? We're practicing. He goes, 
like, what are you doing? He goes, I'm playing chess with ice chips. <laughs> of course you are. Like, what? In the middle of practice, you're playing chess with ice chips in the crease. <laughs> yes, yes, I really like chess, he says. <laughs> yeah, he is, a, he is a funny guy. He was a funny guy. Clearing his head a bit, I guess. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one other time with him was he was he was having trouble focusing on the puck. Um, he was struggling a bit. He wasn't struggle very often. He was just so good. But yeah. the goalie coach said that he wanted to see the puck right at his eyes. So he wanted me to shoot it at his head. Oh. He goes, I want you to shoot it right here. I go, he I said the goalie coach, he wants me to hit him in the head. He goes, Well, I'll go do it, I guess. <laughs> So I wound up first shot and perfect, hit him right between the eyes. He goes, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I needed. <laughs> but he wanted to follow that puck from my stick yeah. right to his eyes. So he wanted me to hit him in the head. Not many guys do say that. I don't know if he was cut or concussed or what. <laughs> He's going to see what it felt like to track it right. Till exactly. And he it thanked hit. me for it. I went, okay, no problem. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Are you okay? <laughs> Most when you hit goalies in the head, most times they come chasing after you. Well, oh, yeah, they're ready to splash or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know uh, there's uh, we had that uh, was it Tory Jung? Yeah, Tory Jung. He's a goalie, yeah. and um, he was a really talented goalie. And I think 16 at the time when he came, 17, he was a younger kid at the time um, with our, our BCHL team there. And um, I still remember a practice, and I think. I don't know, it was one of the first practices he must have practiced with us and we, he comes off the ice into the into the dressing room and he's telling you like oh bodge like wow like you know you got a good shot like you you got a you got a hard shot and uh and i remember you, you said to him like well yeah like i played in the nhl and i was a defenseman like i like shooting like slap shots like hard shots that's my thing that's what know? i had that's all yeah. i had <laughs> and it was funny because like there there's this young kid who, who <laughs> seems surprised that you had a good shot and, and that it hurt like i guess it must have hurt him like yeah. you know like and uh and you're like well yeah i was just laughing as i was sleeping somebody because you know like these kids were like you know they they don't realize it at the time but but they uh they learned so some of them yeah, I know some of them here when I in Victoria. Hey, you got a pretty good shot there. You, you skate pretty good. And I went, well, you should have seen me like 10, 20 years ago. <laughs> this is that's nothing. <laughs> Funny. Well, yeah. I, you know, it's it's well, it's it's true. It is what it is. But yeah. um, so I guess I'll I've got this kind of set up in two separate talks. As long as you have yeah. time for another one, if you don't, yeah. that's okay. Sure. Um, so I'll end this one off soon, but I, I wanted to quickly touch on, I guess, a few of the reasons you you kept kept in the game for for 15 years, and um, if they're personal, you don't have to share those. But um, what kept you showing up and wanting to still play for 15 years in the NHL? That's a good question, and I think every, a lot of people ask, how do you stay that long? And and it seems nowadays a lot of guys are are not having longer careers. Well, some are, but um, yeah. there's Patrick Marlowe's you could, but a lot of guys I see coming in, they're having success and then they're not, which is just straight off the cliff, which is weird to be consistent. That's the biggest key to lasting. But how do you make it 15 years ago? You got to be consistent. You can have an off day, but you got to come back strong. And the next day you have to, you have to wipe that out of your head and go, okay, I can do this. So consistency is big. You, you can have a little slip up, but you got to bounce back up. And I tell these kids when I'm coaching them, I said, you know what? You had a bad game, but you got to get back out there. And that's how you, that's how you're successful. You got to be consistent. Um, I do. I love playing the game at the end when you start getting a family involved and um, yeah. you know, they have stuff going on. And I think at the end, well, my last year, second to last year, I really just didn't want to go anymore. I just didn't want to play. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know you're done. And uh, there was a nice sunny day in LA and I'm driving to the rink. And I, I don't even feel like playing today. Like, and that's bad. That's not good. So when that happens, you know, it's time to go away. And uh, I wish I still had it, but uh, I think I probably could have played. I probably could have, you know, had a bad day. Maybe Justin went off from the roller coaster, went back up again, but um I, 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 yeah, when that sets in your mind that uh, you don't enjoy doing it anymore, then it's time to go. But I loved it. I loved the guys and I loved the traveling was difficult. 
uh, it, it was a grind. There's a lot of games and there was injuries and, mm -hmm. and uh, aches, pains and everything. But um, um, yeah, it's a, it was a fun time. And uh, I say, I love the game at the start. And I, I didn't really think of it as a job. I just go out and play and you got paid for it. I go, this is unbelievable. You're paying me this much money. I'm just, this that's what I bonus. like to do. <laughs> bonus, right? Yeah, that's what I like to do. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was it was it was fun and I never thought I would ever get there, but it happened. It just fell into my lap, sort of thing. Well, it was meant to be, and you had all those uh the, the right formula there that we talked about earlier. So yeah, uh, yeah. um anyways, thanks again. I'm gonna call you back here in a minute. Okay. Uh, just done a new Sounds link. Good. <laughs> Sounds <you> good. <laughs>